Listen up, Gotham. This is Batman. Tune into the Bat Fanatic podcast with Sammy Warmhands. And if you don't, I'll be coming for you. Hey, everybody, it's the Dark Knight of Rap, Sammy Warmhands, and this is the Bat Fanatic podcast. As always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Ben and Evan, and today we are going to once again shout out our longtime sponsor, Radar Toys, right here in Eugene. You can go to RadarToys.com and get free shipping in the U.S., as well as an additional 10% off using the code BATFANPOD, B-A-T-F-A-N-P-O-D. Now, we're going to continue the martial arts Batman quest that we're on, okay? But with a big twist, a big fat motherfucker of a twist, this is the weirdest shit we've ever talked about. Even baffling my co-hosts and their anime sensibilities, this is the one and only Batman Ninja. Batman Ninja 2018. This is going to be a challenge. Directed by Junpei Mizusaki. Written by Kazuki Nakashima. I got that one. Starring Kuichi Yamadera, Wataru Takagi, Ai Kakuma, Rai Kujamiya. Uh, Japanese is phonetic. So. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. There's a lot more. No, how and, many more do you And composed by Hugo Kano. Now, at the end, I'm going to tie back to that. But initial thoughts on Batman Ninja. I will start by saying I knew this existed from when the trailer came out a couple years ago. Ev, you might have sent it to me. I don't know. And I think so. I instantly was just like, I have no interest in seeing this uh, whatsoever. Then I decided to do it for the show because trying to go through some different avenues this season and, and have some interesting conversations. So here we are. I wanted to be open to it initially, and I think that I was. I like the time period. I'm open to... Batman or characters existing in these different realms, and that's all well and good to me. Upon watching it, it was more off the rails than I <laughs> could have maybe imagined it. It was dope and visually dope. They proposed some some like style of CG that I've never seen before or since. But it goes Japanese super hard. It really leans into Japanese stuff. So you saw this when it came out as well as right now? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I own it. That's what I thought. Yeah. Ben? I honestly think it should have been called Batman Anime. Sure. Because, like, I had no expectations. Yeah. I didn't watch trailers. I didn't know anything about it. But I had an idea of what it was going to be, that it was going to be some kind of CG Japan thing. And it was just off the rails. What I wanted was, like, Ninja Scroll, but with Batman. Ooh, have either of you guys seen the Matrix Reloaded shorts that they put out? Yeah. Like after, oh yeah, it's just it's before no. the sequels. Exactly, Sam. It's just the Wachowskis were fans of anime and Japanese culture and stuff. So what they did was like after the first one, and it kind of sets up the second one because one of the shorts directly ties to the storyline. It has to do with one of the ships and it plays a role in number two. Like, this ship is gone. They're the ones who sent the initial message about the robot invasion or something. But then the other ones are just shorts that tie into Matrix world done by different directors as a means to just like, oh, we like this guy's stuff. We want to see his take. And we like this guy's stuff. We want to see his take. And there's one specifically that is, it's like a Matrix simulation set in what is more or less this same Edo time period in Japan. And it is by a director that I really like, Yoshiaki Kawajiri. And he's done a lot of things like Ninja Scroll and stuff. Yeah, boom, baby. Good job. <laughs> but it is, it's awesome. It's it's very dark. It's almost Mignola-esque in its half darkness all the time. But it is super dope looking. It's It's 2D animation. But anyways, it's more or less what I wish that this was yeah. like 
if they took Batman seriously and still put him in this samurai setting, but didn't make it so insane, it could be doper. Well, I had high hopes for it because the whole thing is like, let's just put Batman in this period of Japanese history. Yeah. That's the premise. And then they contrived to get him there because Gorilla Grodd made a time machine. And that's like the first three minutes of the movie. So they oh, get okay. there very, very fast. And so I thought like, okay, that's, that's fine. I mean, I would have been okay if you just like, they're just already there and because we already know all these characters. That's what I thought was that it was yeah. just going to be some weird Elseworlds version. Yeah, but everything's kind of the same. And that's, that seemed like where it was going by wasting so little time getting there. Mm-hmm. But then it just like it, it doubled down on the weird robot wackiness. Eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it, it actually would be kind of a cool opportunity to like Batman is blasted the past. And so he has to get back to his roots. No technology. He's going to retrain in the martial arts or something, you know, in a time period where he never existed. And he's going to really uh, strip down to fundamentals and he's going to kick ass like this. It's turtles in time. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but instead you what still have Batmobiles and there's robot technology and yeah. stuff like that. It's so, and I didn't, I didn't realize that it was made by like a primarily Japanese team or like a Japanese anime team or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so learning that also makes me wish like, that that's the interesting thing right there that's what you lean on this team that doesn't make batman stories that makes japanese things for japanese audiences and then you know western audiences like it too have that team make a batman story in gotham Mm -hmm. make a regular like that because then that will already the way they approach things is going to be so different than the the differences will shine through there but Mm -hmm. to have that team also make the story which mainly about big robots and (laughs) it's just it's too much of that yeah, I think that there's no reason that, despite the fact that this is the place of origin, that they had to go so hard in that direction. Because, you know, Batman and, and these other, these Marvel things, these are all like global franchises at this point. And so I think that it's a really cool thought. You know, if somebody wants to take anything Japanese at this point and kind of like, what did that stir in me? What did that inspire? What's this Japanese franchise that I could Americanize or bring to the market, whatever that looks like or something. And I liked the thought of somebody in some other place other than where Batman is from being so inspired by this thing that they give it their treatment and simultaneously do it justice, hopefully. But instead, this is like, I know it's a cartoon, but it's... (laughs) Like, it's so cartoony. You know, you didn't have to, like, man, I wish you would have just put your, like, awesome Japanese action detective story on this and, like, taken it kind of seriously. It, it could still be in ancient Japan or feudal Japan. It could still be that. Sure. This story has no weight because there's no consequence to anything. Yeah. Anything can happen. So it's like, but you don't mm-hmm. feel anything. Well, let's get into the story. It opens with Batman and Catwoman fighting. Gorilla Grodd in Arkham Asylum, apparently. Some odd Japanese Island. version of it, yeah. And it goes all Inception, and the terrain is shifting, and you don't really know what's happening. It's not explained. And then Batman appears in not only Japan, but ancient Japan, and is quickly ambushed by a team of Joker mask-wearing goons that are samurai on horseback, if I'm not mistaken. I like their masks. Actually, yeah, the the gangs wearing the masks thing is not bad, yeah. I actually think that that's kind of cool. They've got the the V for Vendetta thing going on. Mm -hmm. Sam, what is your, what's your initial and what's your overall thoughts of this animation style? I was really disorienting right away. Um, I've never seen anything like it. I, I was saying to Angela, like, I'm sure that you guys are used to whatever this style is, but it felt like watching the uh, between cuts on a video game or something. It had a very strange style. I don't know if it's something about like the frame rate they use or the, I don't know, but all the motion felt so odd. Mm-hmm. Well, I was thinking in comparison to what we just watched, Soul of the Dragon, how those fight scenes looked and how they made you feel yeah. versus the way the fight scenes in this looked and how they made you feel. And I was like, 
they put a lot of work into it, but it doesn't. It's do on one hand visually quite impressive. Mm-hmm. It's very smooth, and there's a lot going on. But yeah, it sort of never stopped feeling like overkill. <laughs> like just very. I don't know. I keep saying disorienting, but that's the word that I would choose. It. It feels like you know when you put on your VR headset for the first time and you which you will do feel like you're you'll become Batman out to see and you're all like fucking wobbling around like what the fuck you know <laughs> it's this hyper reality thing that's really odd the whole time i was watching it and thinking about you you're taking notes of what i would be taking notes on yeah i was just like everything that was kind of ridiculous i was like oh my god sam is gonna hate this <laughs> or like, or he's gonna think this is so ridiculous you should have had a tally <laughs> like everything. There should be a straight uh, line that he just broke his ass. Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah, it looks like he looked like Victor's ass. Days in prison. <laughs> I was thinking, like, oh man, I wouldn't be surprised if Sam just hates this so hard that he like defers the podcast to Ben and I. And <laughs> but, then, but then I was like, no, no, no. I, but I want. <laughs> the way that you like drive the podcast forward by referring to the story. And I was like, no, I have to listen to Sam. <laughs> so the monkey army appears. Oh, I, yeah. I want to hear, I want to hear Sam talk Dude, through all this. There were times when I would be writing my story note and then I would turn to Ange and read it to her. I'm like, <laughs> can you believe that this is the sentence I just wrote? Like that in and of itself would be the most batshit premise for any story we've ever read or watched. But that is just one of like 50. (laughs) And one thing too that I kept in mind the whole time was like seeing so many of these things is kind of par for the course for me at this point. You know, so many robots, so many samurai stories, so much of this ridiculous crap. Okay, I'm very aware of all this. But I was just thinking like, Oh, Sam has no like point for comparison, yeah. or like all of these things will well, seem like as if Power this cartoon would be is the thing you know that, that would Power be closest Rangers. to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like robot combos. Not since fourth grade, really. So yeah, yeah I mean, it's yeah. yes. I'm like, oh man, he's gonna feel like they're just pulling this from like the nether realms for no reason when when really this is like so cultural. Hey, I mean, I I really enjoyed watching. Mecha Godzilla fuck shit up in Godzilla versus Kong, you know. I mean, I uh, I have a little interest in some of these things, but yeah, you'll you'll enjoy my notes as we go. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> uh, okay, Batman starts to uh, track down Joker and mistakes Harley for him. She's incognito, and Joker surprises him from behind. I write. This is so fucking weird already. (laughs) I think I'm just digesting the visuals. Batman escapes and comes across a ventriloquist geisha, Selena Kyle, who's also been there. You say it like that, like it's a strange thing. For two years. I say it like that because I don't know if I'm even using the right word there i i don't want to misuse geisha if that's not the vibe that they're going for no it seems good my fish out of water take on it um you're doing good Good but yeah so she's been there for two years because she was slightly closer to everything happening i guess with grod in the beginning than batman was proximity wise she got sent there first i don't know so she reviews batman's surveillance because he still has his bat suit and his tech with him of uh, the night that grod's time machine fucked everything up she's kind of then giving this monologue that explains what she's seen in the two years before batman arrived right and so we have this no man's land scenario where all of the feudal sects of japan are run by the rogues so it's penguin two-face ivy and deathstroke who Actually, I don't see a lot of Deathstroke in stuff, and so that surprised me, but we don't get much of it. Mm. And they do it sort of like a video game character title montage, Mm -hmm. and and a little bit like they did in Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey, but very much like 
just makes me feel like Mortal Kombat or something, you know. Yeah, you get your like character intros with their little vocal blurb and then the splashy name on screen. Yep. I really like the uh, parade floats as their characters in that part, though. Mm. Well, I th- you're saying video game completely lands to me because this yeah. seems like the video Absolutely. game, but then they forgot to make the video game. So <laughs> yeah. it's just like the introducing the characters and here's the setup and then there's no payoff to any of it. You're like, can't, I, mean, obviously there's I can't a payoff, play this? It's like, it's so weird and unearned. Yeah. There's the middle 40 hours that we missed. Yeah. <laughs> so she explains this stuff to him and then they go incognito, right? And walk through town. And she says something to the effect of like, here, this way you'll blend in more, right? And yet he has a bat signal bald spot <laughs> carved in his head? And she yeah. compliments him on it. What the she fuck? Says that was a good choice. Yeah. Yes, I think that that's maybe one of the first times where I was actually like, oh, Sam isn't going <laughs> to like this. <laughs> Not only is he like a friar, and there's a bat signal on his bald spot. <laughs> well, that's so Should I get a tattoo of that right that here? Up. When another story, or like a better story, that would be his disguise. They introduce it in that scene, and then that's the last time we ever see it. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. like, what was even the point of it? Well, shit just goes too off the rails. There's no normal living here. you know. <laughs> Alfred is there. He made a tiny bat cave because he was transported in the Batmobile somehow. He has a tiny ponytail. Yes, he does. Very Japanese. Yeah. I wrote, is this over yet? How could there possibly be another hour of this? Like, I really underestimated the amount of story that they could cram in to this 90-minute film. Joker's voice, I wrote, sounds like Dr. Psycho, and Harley is trying really hard to do a Tara Strong impression with the really high voice and the occasional grit, right? That Joker voice, man. And I don't know if this was made in Japanese first and then so these are Western actors trying to mimic whatever the original delivery was, but that was so... That's that's maybe the worst Joker I've ever encountered. I don't think so necessarily, but I have more on that later. Batman goes after the Joker in his Batmobile... And this is when the Joker's ancient castle turns into a giant (laughs) robot. The Batmobile turns into the Batwing and then into the Batpod or Batcycle. Sumo Bane appears for all of 20 seconds or something. Yes, that was my second part. It, was, it, went, it went from like Christian Monk to Sumo Bane. And I was like, oh, Sam's going to hate it again. Oh, yeah. Um, the mech bat suit appears. The year one boot swarm of bat trick thing happens, you know, where he attacks Brandon's SWAT team with the cloud of bats. We get that little thing. This is already just the craziest thing I've ever seen. We're mixing this ancient setting with all this modern technology. It's never explained. I mean, you could sort of get like, okay, he's wearing the bat suit. Alfred may have been in the Batmobile. That's a stretch. That you can wrap your head around, but they don't really acknowledge how or why this piece of architecture is now a transformer. It's that Grodd brought the tech back so that these individuals could build their individual robot castles so that he could later have his but, super but even, robot. But, yes, even but you don't, no sense. you don't know oh, that I know, at I know, all. I know, but it's... it's No, but the whole reason they were there is because Batman showed up and screwed things up. This wasn't his plan. He said his plan was to send them somewhere else. Yeah. He would take over Gotham. Yeah. That is a thing. And what Eb said is also a thing, but also these are not addressed until like an hour later. Yeah. (laughs) And so as I'm watching it, again, uh, many people who may have watched this, there's no context for it. There's nothing that came before it. I mean, you're just... Okay, let's check out this crazy different take on it. And you're like, are you guys going to explain anything or just just do anything you can think of? Like, well, you know what? He thought of an idea. Let's include it. That guy thought of an idea. Let's include it. The intern has an idea. 
we're at the 17 minute mark, right? Yeah. This thing has hardly started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nightwing and Red Robin are introduced and they introduce Batman to Aeon and his ninja clan. And then Evan's face says it all. We get the bald mohawk rat tail Tim Drake shows up with a scroll that his monkey found, which leads them to Grodd. No, no, that's, uh, that's Damien, that's, which is even worse. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Worse. I'm sorry. You're right. I said Red Robin a minute ago. You're right. But that's Damien, which is even worse because this Damien is like plucky and fun and has a monkey sidekick. Monkey G. You're right. I'm actually going to... I'm so ashamed of this. I'm editing my note that I read it from. As we speak, yeah. So I corrected the mistake. Yeah, this is a piece of art. How dare you defile it? But, I mean, that's a little fundamental to me because each of those characters has a defined personality that sets them apart from each other because they're all the same guy. We do get a Jason that is very Jason later. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not Damien and... and Dick and Tim are kind of them because they're kind of boring characters, but that Damien is a million miles away from the character. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think- that whole, like, first of all, the design, the look, oh my God. I mean, I I have been told by many, I have quite the uh, uh, odd, bald style, um, but my God, it's an atrocity on the eyes. Then the cuddly little monkey friend is just baffling. Although that's an amazing line. The uh, yeah, apparently he has a monkey friend that he talks to now, and I don't know. It's weird, but and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, it is weird. You're right. <laughs> I think Red Hood has my favorite redesign in this. It's cool because it's kind of reminiscent of Joker Red Hood too. Killing the Joke. long tubular hat. Yeah, totally. It's like a style of like shaded monk hat that I've seen in other things in the past. And I like how everybody else gets kind of this funny sort of old, but also kind of tech version of stuff. And Red Hood is the only person who looks like he fits the period. Like this is just standard yeah. wandering monk garb. But then your basket hat happens to be red to let mm-hmm. me know who you are. That's cool. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit ahead. Um, okay, my bad. So this is where I believe Grodd is in the spa and explains that he was going to transport all the villains as sort of the guinea pigs for his time machine. And Batman showing up to stop him is what fucked everything up and somehow created this reality. The two of them team up on Joker and Harley's pirate ship thing. And try to take him down. They swarm it with the whole Bat Fam and the whole Ninja Clan. And we have another just even <laughs> bigger, wilder action scene. You are so, like, you sound so bummed. <laughs> so bummed. <laughs> just, like, just beaten down. No, I just don't know how to describe what the fuck I witnessed, you know? It's, yeah, like, I don't really it's, like, yeah. it's like, what shorthand could possibly convey... <laughs> The insanity that my <laughs> eyes behold. I liked the fight with Harley and Catwoman in this part. Yeah. Hmm, I don't think I did. I do. There's tons of these redesigns that I hate. Selena is terrible. It's terrible, but I kind of like it. I like it more than any of them. You like the rack. That's what you like. Yes, honestly, <laughs> and that's probably what it is. When, they, when the two of them were fighting, Angie's like, geez, both of them have really big tits. I'm like, I mean, it's... I don't know anything about anime, but I know that there's like a spinoff that's porn. So, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah, Titties are a thing, isn't it? (laughs) And it's already comics, so that's already a thing. Yeah. Yeah, uber tits. Yeah. From here, there is just incessant hollering from the Joker while they're trying to catch him. He's just screaming and shouting and really going in in the vocal booth there. There is a two-face ambush that is over before it starts. Catwoman makes a deal with Grodd. She has one of these infinity stone things that they need for the, uh, the machine to be reactivated and take her back to the future. Like, hey, I've got one of these. You need it. I'll give it to you, and then you'll take me with. We'll go back home, right? 
And then Joker blows up the whole ship with a literal powder keg. Yeah, that happened. Anything else to say about this massive sequence? Uh, nope, I like that fiery inferno and uh, like Batman's like long yell blow away as the stuff explodes. That was another of the many animate things. Mm. That's like every time a villain in Dragon Ball Z gets killed by a giant energy blast, it's that shot of like staring uh, into the blinding light as pieces of their face and armor melt away. <laughs> gotcha. So the one hand, I was like, that's it's never very fast. It's like I've seen this before. I've seen this many times. Then we have uh, Batman on the ledge, sort of, with this picturesque sky. And he's talking about how, well, he's fucked up my vehicles. You know, it's fucked up my suit. I've lost all my technology. How am I going to get the upper hand? And there's this sort of mastery of mind, body, and spirit montage that occurs here as he sort of, you know, remembers his training and that his tech is not what makes him who he is you know? you're talking about when he's standing on the cliff yeah that scene was so weird to me because now we're 25 minutes into the movie we're still not very far <laughs> in and he's introducing the movie again he's like going over everything that's happened i'm in japan i have to this it was so unnecessary and even like strange until i realized they lampshade it by having Nightwing stand behind him, so it's like he's talking to someone. Well, I asked that at one point, too. I was like, who is he talking to? The audience? <laughs> yes, is the answer. Mm -hmm. Actually, the very beginning, the first lines you hear in the movie are Selena talking to the audience. She's like, you think you've heard every Batman story? I thought so, too. And they're like, wait, what the fuck? Uh, okay. Yeah. But that how, is the least weird thing, and I forgot it even happened till just now. How cool is it that that ninja village is shaped like the bat symbol because of the tree line? It's not very cool. Oh. I don't even remember it. I feel like yeah, I only noticed it later. I think it's when they're like standing on the cliff overlooking this village where they're going to train or whatever, and it's shaped like the bat symbol. This is a foul question, but... Is bukkake a Japanese thing? Because this is like cartoon bukkake. It's just like yeah. so much overkill. You don't even know what you're looking at. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah, this bukkake is, is just the bukkake. Japanese name for it. It's not, so they it's didn't not invent like it, but they definitely like went all in on it. Yeah, okay. it's not like we don't do these things but somehow. Can you point in the historical record to me in non-Japanese cultures where the... Yeah, what's, <laughs> it was the I bet the I bet the Greek people did it. <laughs> what's the British the term? Yeah, it was probably more like a group thing. Everybody doing their own thing. Not <laughs> I think that a lot of stuff in regards to Japan is like the simultaneous like duality between like the niceties and the polite culture, but then all this weird stuff that simultaneously exists. The repression, and yeah. The blowing yeah. off the other side of it, yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's not like other. Cultures aren't like busting nuts on faces, but somehow the Japanese stuff is what sticks out in people's mind. Well, it's, it's, yeah. for it. it's I mean, a it's, word for it. Yeah, but there's a, there has to be a word in every other culture for that same stuff. It's like how America is uniquely violent and fixated on sex in our own ways because of this weird one nation under God, you know, we have all these strange cultural hangups that like you can see the big bikini tits on the billboard, but God forbid you ever dress that way <laughs> or something, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, we probably have some really cool, unique words for terrible violent things. Yeah. That no one else. has. It's, it's just a strange, like there's the puritanical model you're supposed to follow. And then there's the creative, whiplash of it i guess you know yeah mm -hmm. all right so but i think the point stands this movie is bukkake yeah it's yeah <laughs> and we're the ones being bukkake yes yeah, yes yeah. it's it's all in my eyes yeah <laughs> yeah i had to wipe many times i apologize to the listeners now this <laughs> is where it takes an even weirder turn and the entire visual shifts to this bizarre off-model, almost watercolor-looking flashback, I think, until I realized this is just a continuous part of the story, where Red Hood 
faces off with Joker and Harley, who appear almost like the Beavis and Butthead do America Rob Zombie interlude where they're hallucinating in the desert. Mm -hmm. It's like a backup issue. They just brought in a whole different art team for this section. It looks nothing like you just saw. Therefore, I thought this was like an alternate time, but Mm -hmm. no, it's not. They are farmers, and they don't remember who they are. Jason is there to kill them. He essentially shoots Joker in the face. I'm sure that's what I witnessed. And then it shows the bullet go into the ground, and Joker's still there. And I'm like, it's like you're just stuck. I'm like, you just shot him in the face. We just watched his face explode on camera, but okay. We also watched Batman turn into bats later on. So that's true. So that happened, and Batman shows up. That's when I realize, oh, this is now. Okay. Because clearly he couldn't have been there before. And then there's this whole thing of like, oh, yeah, the explosion must have given him amnesia, and now he doesn't remember who he is, and now they're just living a simple life on this fucking, I don't know. That could be an entire story in and of itself. Yes. Batman has a confrontation with Joker. A big explosion happens. They're hunting him down. They come across him, and it seems like he's a good... I mean, we've read versions of this story, but that could be a thing in and of itself, and it's like one of 15 different threads in this movie. I mean, that is in the Harley Quinn animated series, the second season. He gets knocked into the vat of chemicals a second time. And uh, you don't see him for a long time. And when you do see him, you realize he's one of the extras and he's a normal guy. And he has no fucking idea. Like, what happened? They're just like, wait, what? And uh, so, yeah, I've seen that. And it totally is its own story. But we get. The thing that extra trips me up in this part is the time frame. I don't understand the time frame. Because it's like 30 seconds have passed. (laughs) Yeah, like the art direction change is kind of disorienting. The only thing that I know is that that's kind of a common thing in anime is to have like guest directors for episodes because this episode has like a dope battle scene and they just want to like randomly pull this one director just to get his take on these characters for 20, 30 minutes or something. So in order to make this seem more artistic or more dreamy or or more surreal. And also just because I haven't seen a whole lot of Japanese versions of Batman. And so they're just giving some other people the opportunities to give their version there for a second. But between the art change and then I'm thinking like, I don't know how long all of this is taking, um, but they, (laughs) they lost their memory on the boat explosion but enough time has passed for them to establish themselves as farmers and learn how to farm. (laughs) Uh, I mean, either occupy or build a house. Like I don't really get how long this took. There's just some bodies in the back, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Another part that gets me is Jason is like, they're faking it. That's Joker. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Batman is like, no, I, I don't think so. I, I think this is real. Like he can't uh, hide that look in his eye. Yeah, he doesn't have the look in his eye. Something is going on here. But he says something to Jason like, if you knew him like I know him. And I was like, <laughs> mm. Jason knows him a lot. <laughs> like yeah. He hella knows him a lot, Batman. And this proves it. That's true. Because as soon as they walk away, that's when they start laughing like hyenas or Dr. Evil. Even even that is both like later they bring it up again because like you're dumb and they need to tell you again, but also to like change it where he says like, it was the flower that brought me back. So it was like the turnip flower. Yeah. He rubbed the turnip on his face and then that brought his memory back. So they, they weren't right. Yeah. And because he says that the plants were a collaboration with poison ivy to like bring his memory back. Yeah. But when did he start that plan? Cause he wouldn't have started it after he lost his memory and forgot that he was Joker. So it must've been like a contingency plan that he started. Well, no, he didn't actually, it's explained a little bit later. He had himself hypnotized 
because Batman wouldn't buy it unless he bought it himself, right? Oh, he had to fully okay. transform, and then the flower was like his inception totem that would bring him back. You know, yeah, exactly. It was like his I'm so glad you paid attention. hypnotizing <laughs> keyword. Well, yeah, because what all I'm trying to do is like make sense of what the story is. Uh-huh. I'm really trying. Now, you mentioned the guest director thing, and actually what that change reminded me of was Kill Bill. Oh, yeah. Because that's really the only thing I could think of, not only is it anime, but aside from like Sin City, where Tarantino guest directed for Robert Rodriguez, and even that's not super noticeable, because he didn't pen the script or anything, and, and Tarantino's biggest thing is his dialogue. Mm-hmm. This is one of the only examples I can point to is when they take a live-action movie and become a cartoon for five, six minutes. And so, yeah, that's sort of the only thing that I could reference. And the styles are so very different with yeah. this part being like watercolor color pencil and so loose and flowy it feels like an art film all of a sudden yeah and oh, actually about- i didn't get to mention this before i should have but the cassandra going against the 200 members of the league was very much kill bill and the crazy 88 yeah nice mm-hmm. when you brought up animatrix before like this thing would work much better as an anthology as it could be the same length or maybe even maybe an hour longer and have it be similar to the Animatrix. Like maybe there's one main story or thread that's being built and worked towards, but it was like four to six vignettes made by different directors, with different yeah. studios. And so it's just like each of these crews takes mm-hmm. on Batman in this setting with their own style. That's what Gotham Knight was right before exactly. the Dark Knight is they build this connective tissue and each one is sort of its own thing, but they all are world building after begins before TDK. Uh, totally. With pretty unique takes on the visuals and stuff. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. In fact, that was one of the first times I remember seeing sort of anime influence in Batman. Mm-hmm. Totally. All right. Totally so forgot about that. Back to what the fuck is happening. Grodd activates the robot castle thingy. And there is a nice little sheeb in the road, and I want more of him. He was nice. Um, the what? The little puppy, the Shiba Inu. Oh, he barks. oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was nice. I would have been more interested in watching this style of movie about the dog, I think, <laughs> than about every Batman character that ever existed. <laughs> the Bat Fam prepares for war with the rogues armies, which brings all the uh, infinity stones or whatever they are into the same place. Field of death or something. And then all these zords and transformers (laughs) fight. Again, it's still not explained how they would even have electricity, let alone all of this. I think their batteries power the entire facility. (laughs) Those little tubes. Yeah. As this is happening, and we're bringing in the you know the four different sects with from the other villains, right? I'm hearing the penguin's voice, and I'm like, God, he sounds exactly like the one on the Batman from 2004, and uh, uh, Tom Kenny, and he also did the Ninja Turtles crossover movie. He was penguin in that. SpongeBob, among others. Yes, yes, Maybe even yeah. Rocco. And uh, I was like, God, he sounds just just like him. He's and uh, that's when I'm starting to get, you know, a little bit confused. Like, man, they're doing these, like, really spot-on impressions for all these Japanese actors, you know, because I, I looked at the IMDb right away because the title sequence, it just shows the director and the writer and the animators, whatever. It doesn't show the, the actors' names. I had to look it up and uh, type them in my notes while I was watching the film. Now, here with all this crazy tech, there are horseback battles and then bat-shaped paragliders and Grodd collects all the little purple energy things to activate his machine, which he then mind-controls the rogues to consolidate power and shift their giant robot things into a big Megazord thing. Um... Yeah. 
He's revealing yes, go he's on. revealing to Catwoman that he has no plan to return for the future and that he's successfully conquered all of these villains and, and their tribes. So that he can make a monkey nation, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Then this Let's is get to the meat. Planet of the Apes, yes. Yeah. Joker and Harley show up. Wild card, bitches. And and is it a hot air balloon, baby? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. He takes over Grodd's shit as they all form their big ships into one uh, fucking Voltron thing. <laughs> dropping, dropping turnips. You said you don't know anime, but you said Yeah, Thor, what are you talking you said about? Voltron. Said, yeah, you know I mean, anime. I was alive in the 80s. I, I remember, <laughs> sort of. Um, so Grodd sacrifices himself to protect Robin as the tables have turned here a little bit and gives <laughs> them, here is my flute that controls the army of monkeys. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't believe the words coming out of my mouth. Man, when they do the double <sighs> monkey flute solo, I was like, oh, this is ripping. So watching this, I was thinking about Redline. We watched Redline together, didn't we? Oh, yeah. On your recommendation. Redline is a anime film from maybe about 10 years ago. And it's about some kind of like car race that spans planets or something like that. And it's gorgeous. But it's also insane. The plot is just ridiculous. Crazy things happen. But it works. Like it feels right. You're just kind of along for the ride. And as you're saying all these ridiculous things in this, there's a party that's like Gorilla Grodd hands Robin a flute that controls the monkey army. There's a version of that that is enjoyable to watch. It's nonsense and it's ridiculous, but like I'm sticking you, with that part, the nonsense and ridiculous. But I so if you took took out the middle part with Jason Todd and the different art style, and you probably still have to excise a fair amount of stuff, but you took this whole thing and you made it twenty seven minutes long with a great soundtrack and it was just one nonsensical thing after another, but it was the length of a sitcom and it was just or, Non-stop visual set piece after visual set piece. Or like we talked about before, if this was almost like a robot chicken, you know, shorts. Little shorts that are sort of disconnected that loosely have some sort of through line. Because for a movie plot, it doesn't really have one. No, the structure and the pacing is so strange. The plot is so strange. Sam, is there any place in your heart for giant robots and monkey flutes? Or have you turned it off because could you ever like this? Or have you just instantly turned it off because it's Batman and you do not like what they're doing to your precious Batman? Precious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, I love Godzilla movies and, you know, big crazy action shit. He's a fake Godzilla boy. He just does it so the girls will like him. Yeah. Yeah, everyone knows I'm recognized as a sex symbol. I saw that picture of you with the record in front of your stuff. Uh, you that's... took it. <laughs> You're just oh, yeah. tooting your own horn. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So you can't claim to not be a sex symbol. I've, that's published. I've seen that picture. Well, uh, to answer your question, there's really nothing about this movie that interests me. And, <laughs> and I would not have seen it if not for the show and wanting to just have a crazy talk about it. Yeah. Cause I mean, if on some whim I was like, man, I've gone through everything on this HBO max. I'm I've just going to Batman versus Superman 30 times. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to watch this. If that were the case, I wouldn't have gotten five minutes. I would have stopped. If that answers that's, your question. That's, um, that's cool. Buddy. Go on. Now a cloud of bats form together to form a giant Batman. No, the monkeys See, first. Oh, yeah, the monkey army swarms. Yeah, monkeys make the golden baby and then the bats. Yep. I turned away for a moment and there was a giant Batman on the screen. I didn't see how it showed up. I rewound because it happened so fast. And then they fight the giant Joker Megazord thing. Here's another all capital note that I have. How is there 20 minutes left? How can more things happen? I like the the giant bat Batman looks like classic old school Batman. Batman. But yeah, huge ears and stuff. Just the black and gray. 
also, Sam, you wouldn't know too, but the long, drawn-out super fist punch, exploding arm thing would be a very anime element. Mm. I mean, that's a normal superhero thing too, though. That's my problem with this too, is this is not... I don't know what the production team did, but like I said, I'm pretty sure this is like a Japanese production team that makes this stuff. Yeah. That kind of homage or like nod to anime stuff or big robot stuff would have more weight from a team that doesn't do that. But because that's what this group probably does <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's not mm-hmm. special or unique. It's just anime. Just them doing it to Batman. It's sort of yeah. like, why are these characters chosen if this is the movie you want to make, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could be anything. So this is where now human size Batman and Joker confront each other, and he explains the whole hypnotized thing. And every character is paired off with a villain and a hero fighting one on one. Which is an interesting technique when you have this big ass war thing happening with all the characters. Then they break it down a little bit so there's some sort of personal stakes in the fight. And it's not just like, whoa, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. What's happening? Yeah, they're all still inside their robot cockpit, so they got to go address them individually where they're at. Yeah. The army of monkeys destroy the castle robot Megazord thing. Batman and Joker have a sword fight on a rooftop. This is probably my favorite part in the entire thing. I could see that. I mean, it's the most normal, for lack of a better word, confrontation. The most serious. It's the part that takes itself the most seriously. Yeah, it's epic in a small setting. I mean, we just went from giant robot battles to now a rooftop sword fight. I love how Joker looks as he gets more beat up. I don't love his voice still, but now he looks disheveled and now he looks like an extra crazy person. Um, But Sato Tobi versus Orochimaru and the reanimated Hokage is an infinitely better version of this exact same thing. Absolutely. Well, and this is just another victim of their sort of every idea that we have gets included mentality because you have both characters fake out, fall to their death off the roof and not die. Like, they do the exact same thing twice. And it's been done better in a bunch of other things we've read and seen. Yeah. Again, if you want to do your take on Batman, you don't do the same story beats and the same plot. You take your sensibilities and make it. But, like, listening to this Joker talk about, like, you don't have the guts to do what it takes and blah, blah, blah. Who gives a shit? Who cares? (laughs) This is... Ugh. Yeah, let him die. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. All bets are off. There's been no slow buildup in the story of like, I can't bring myself to do what needs to be done. And how, that, it was not involved in this at all. Yeah, I mean, he could have cut the Joker in half from head to toe, <laughs> like a cartoon, just split down the middle, and that would have made no difference to me. <laughs> <laughs> None at all. Oh, you so say you didn't watch after the credits, because that's, yeah. that's the post credits scene. Damien's monkey is sad when they leave. That monkey is Chi. Call him by his not name. nice. He has a name. <laughs> Sorry. That's another little animal beat that's sad. And he has a girlfriend. And then there well, is a, f- a friend that's a girl. The line activate the quake engine, which is very like <laughs> 80s to me. And then more bats. And then it's over. And there is a little epilogue thing in the credits where again this goes nowhere Alfred gives Bruce a a suit for a meeting with the mayor and Selena sells some of the shit she brought back from ancient Japan at an antique shop she hawks it and then we see this weird ancient Japanese horse drawn Batmobile I miss all of this I gave up as soon as the credits started I didn't see Uh, any of this well it doesn't matter (laughs) <laughs> it's. <laughs> I don't understand why they changed the art style yet again at the very end <laughs> they go 2D for a minute with Selena at the antiquities fair and I get that <laughs> but then Bruce puts on a suit to go meet the mayor but then it closes with him like rounding the corner on the street and riding off in a horse drawn carriage 
I said to Amber, I was like, he's going to go see the mayor in the bat carriage. You're right. Uh, but that's where he's going. It was he's, already I mean, not, so weird that that hadn't occurred to me. Yeah, not only is it a horse-drawn carriage, which an eccentric rich person might do. I mean, there's horse-drawn carriages in New York City. You could do that, I guess. But it also has bat logos on it. Yeah, that's a great point, because when I say suit, I mean tuxedo. Yeah. Yeah, we don't see Bruce in plain clothes using bat stuff. (laughs) Well, at this point, I realize that... The real cast that we just listened to is Roger Craig Smith from uh, Arkham Origins, Fred Tatashori, Tony Hale, who I was like, this dude sounds, this Joker sounds exactly like Dr. Psycho. Okay, well, that's because it's fucking voiced by Dr. Psycho. I just think Buster Bluth. Like, how is that Buster Bluth? <laughs> well, yeah, he oh, is really? range. <laughs> that's um, hilarious. I love that dude on Veep. But I really, 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 really love the Harley Quinn show, and he's great on it. And then you saw that Harley Quinn is. Well, yeah. Then we have uh, Greg Griffin. We have Tara Strong as Harley. We have Tom Kenny as Penguin. Eric Bauza, and of course many more. There's a big cast in this. But Will Friedle is Red Robin. Will Friedle is Terry McGinnis from Batman Beyond. The Batman. Oh Batman Beyond. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. So that was funny, and, and then I got back onto IMDb, and I'm like, well, why the fuck does it list all the Japanese actors? And I scroll through the whole cast, and it has the whole English cast at the end. I'm like, I've never watched a movie where they put the cast of two entirely different versions of the film, like the dubbed one and the regular one, in the same thing. I've never seen that before. So, Well, usually when I've seen that done, it's the same character, the Japanese Batman and the English Batman. Like, you'll see it that way, not the whole cast, and then yeah, again. the whole cast again. I mean, I'm not really sure I've seen anything that's been fully translated and overdubbed. I, th- You know, I've seen things with subtitles or whatever, but I don't think I've ever seen anything with two separate casts, and so that <laughs> threw me, especially when the overdub cast is sort of the... A and B list versions of these characters yeah. that we would normally get. Like that's normally the reverse. So And maybe some of the strangest in their performances are like what I don't like about the Joker mm-hmm. performance is him modeling his performance on whatever the Japanese performance was. Well, I think there may have been some dubbing syncing issues because when I'd be watching a scene and and I really like Batman's voice in this. I think he's great. But his timing like, if they'd put in a pause, I'd be like, I like your opinion on that, Ben. He'd say, I like your opinion on that, Ben. It's because sometimes uh-huh. you see, like, if something was translated from English to Japanese, there's a lot more syllables to say the simple thing. So he's, yeah. like, really drawing it out. <laughs> it's just awkward. Yeah. Pros? I mean, the visuals. Before watching this, I was thinking about when we talk about that modern animation where you can tell when they're saving their money, yeah. the frame rate drops, everything gets simple. And I thought to myself, like, man, what they really should just do, but they won't because it probably wouldn't be received well, is they should just, like, the scenes where nothing is happening should just be a fucking killer panel from a comic book. It should be a static image that's, like, the best possible composition and lighting and everything as two characters talk. And then you save all your budget and animation and, and complexities for the things that need it. Mm. And so I had that thought before watching this, and then it kind of popped up again in the early scenes when the frame rate was that kind of like low CG frame rate. But then some of my favorite visual moments in this were the scenes where nothing was happening, and it was just a flat static shot, because it was exactly that. Yeah. Nothing was moving, and it was just a beautiful like color palette and like a, a tiered castle. On the, like It's gorgeous when it's firing in all cylinders. It's a stunning visual movie it's just the other things don't work to reinforce that or tie into it Mm -hmm. they do some really interesting things with the sky especially like the sky is not just a flat color it actually has like this you know half circle wave tapestry layer to like the whole thing they put this like really interesting textural stuff on it and i said it before but 
I feel like the whole thing was kind of an attempt to recreate like a new version of old Japanese brushwork or something with the squirrels because all the characters are modeled in a way where their like exterior lines or the shading and texture is made to look like a dry brush or a colored pencil or something. I on a three-dimensional object. Uh, yeah. yeah, on an object. And I thought that that is really original. A guy named Takashi Okazaki is the guy who did the character design in this. And he's also the creator and original artist of Afro Samurai, mm. which later got turned into a cartoon featuring Samuel Jackson. So I thought that that's a cool little uh, talent pull. I just like to say I, I should have had you guys read the opening cast names because I have it's no experience you, in, in no, saying I, Japanese yeah. names and words. I liked it way better. It sounded uh, like Will Ferrell do doing George Bush saying oh, good. Uh, foreign leaders' names. Good, yeah. They're, so they're like, let's let's just watch him struggle. That's fun. <laughs> oh, you think you're a smart guy, huh? What about that? <laughs> what about that one episode where you tried to speak the Japanese names? This is like a a pro that actually slides into my cons. Actually, Sam, you give your pros first and then I'll do my thing. Cause it's do you have place. pros, Sam? Uh, I, all these Find categories, that you like. all these categories are very short. My pros, I wrote cast because I, I was glad that they did bring back, you know, some of the heavy hitters and I'm not familiar with this Batman, but I do like him. They weren't given anything of substance to work with, but I was glad that they were there. That's the only thing that rooted it to something vaguely familiar, you know, in terms of the world that we were in. So, yeah, that's really all I've got for pros. I mean, I, I think, as you mentioned, Ben, that we have criticized some scenes will look choppier, some will look smoother. and whatever. whatever they set out to do from top to bottom was well executed. It didn't seem like anything was like cheap or choppy like some of the modern DC stuff is. It had a very weird feel to it, but that's just because it's foreign to me, the style. So, I mean, I will give them props on it looks like it was well budgeted and well executed. I just didn't connect with it any, you know... None of the things that they were trying to dazzle us with were like things that matter to me. You were too busy going like, that's what made of monkeys? Are they all monkeys? Okay. <laughs> Golden monkey, baby. <laughs> Got it. My thing was, this just occurred to me a couple of days ago, and I was actually really, really excited about it. Amber and I have been watching more things with the subtitles on lately, partially because... Riley seems to be getting scared by movies a lot lately. So we've been keeping the volume a little bit lower and turning the subtitles on. Um, but we've also found that we really like it because it turned out that we were just missing a lot of dialogue. Like even movies that we've seen multiple times before, I just was just not hearing the line for what it was. And it's been really cool to like, oh my God, that's what they say. And things have been better. I've also been watching more cartoons with the subtitles on kind of for the same reason, but also mostly just because they're not generated here. And I really like the thought of hearing the intended voice for all these different characters. You know, if we're watching something in English that's made in America, that's what you intended. Cool. Um, if I'm watching something from somewhere else, though slightly more challenging, if you made up an original character and you voiced him this way you did it for a reason you picked that dude or that lady because you thought that they fit the part well and i was thinking that it's really interesting that they're given this opportunity because batman is so big that they're presented with this opportunity to make this stuff because who knows how far this influence goes you know like maybe people in japan are reading batman comics and that's super cool to me oh for sure so i would i was the other day, thinking for the first time, like, they're going to have made it in Japan, voiced it with Japanese voice actors. Yeah, that's what and, I thought, too. And I intended to watch it this time for the first time, because I've may maybe watched it two or three other times, but only in English. 
that I was going to watch it this time and watch it in Japanese. And I was very curious about what does Japanese Batman and what does Japanese Joker sound like? Cause that's them doing the opposite. That's, yeah. that's their version of us taking something Japanese and filling it with our pool of voice actors. And I was like, man, I'm, I really want to know what this sounds like. You know, how do they envision Japanese Bruce Wayne and stuff? Then I go to start the movie and there is no Japanese audio. And you have to like I import was, it or something. It gets very random options, French, Portuguese. Uh, okay. And then I go to the subtitles and there was English subtitles amongst other things. So I don't know what the deal is or if there never was Japanese audio and only the visual was produced in Japan or if it had Japanese audio. No, it did because again, I listed all those cast members that we didn't hear, yeah. but I think what it probably is, is if those guys are the main cast over there, those are probably established actors that they would have to pay <laughs> to do I, this version I don't of think it it's too. That, I would think it would be on the Blu-ray because I rented the digital version, and it was it was like the uh, the Dark Knight Returns thing again, where it said the runtime was 170 minutes. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? And then I realized uh -huh. it's because it's both versions of the movie back to back, so oh. the Japanese version just comes after it. Huh. Oh, really? So it is here. It seems weird that it's not on there. Well, and that's always like the debate because a lot of the dialogue in anime, like dubbed anime, is bad. It's just delivered strangely, or it's campy, or it's weird, and you just kind of take that for what it is. Like you like the, you like the subject matter and the content and the novelty of it, so you get over that. You hear the same actors over and over. Yeah, but then is it like, is the Japanese version any less those things, or is it just because it's a language you don't speak, and so you don't realize like, oh, this is still campy or weird or, like, is it because of the source material or because of the adaptation? Exactly. And so it'd be I interesting think, to hear, like, does the Japanese Joker sound exactly the same, or does he work better? Or? Mm -hmm. That's all I was thinking, because, no, I'm not understanding the stuff that I'm hearing, but how does it sound? Though? You understand it, the emotion. Yeah, exactly. That's just interesting to my ears. Uh, so, well, that's nice, because I look forward to maybe tracking that down, because I was really looking forward to hearing it like that. Ben, did you have uh, cons to add? Nothing to add. It's just the story was just all over the place. And I, there was never enough time. As it sounds like, it's like no version of this would work very well for you. For me, there's a version of these kind of things that would play a little better, but it was just so crammed in and so jumbled that, yeah, nothing st stuck. I didn't feel anything watching it. Yeah, oh. my, my cons list is very easy. It just says everything. <sighs> I wanted to say that this, uh, you know, we talked about why did they decide to do this when they could have done something else? And, uh, you know, as a person who has seen a whole lot of these kind of things, and I know, I know exactly what they're doing and I get what, you know, when weird stuff comes up, like, okay, cool. Let's do, this is just something that, that you do, but it still went so hard on it that it felt like it was, unironically spoofing itself. Yeah, like a parody of itself. Yeah, totally. Trifecta. Detective, <laughs> I wrote, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like he looks at plans once or something, like you know, blueprints about a thing. And, ninja? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all ninja-ish stuff. Well, simultaneously, this is maybe the least ninja Batman I've ever yeah. seen at the same time. <laughs> By comparison, he's just like another guy running around fighting in this movie. Nothing Although about it is like, they do give him the little video game banner at the end, Ninja Batman or whatever. Oh yeah. It's oh Ninja yeah, Batman. that's true. yeah, that's Ninja Batman. Which Batman is even more like a video up. game. Like he get character changes, costume changes. All yeah, he things. leveled like up. That was like a moment when he's doing that first initial like monologue to remind you what the movie is you're watching twenty minutes in, and he's talking about like we got to learn the ways of the ninja and learn this and that. And I was thinking like, what? You, you, you know already this. are that. You are, that's your old thing, is you already are a ninja. I get maybe the weapons are a little different, but it's still like throwing pointy things at people and hey, hiding in the dark. If like he can use weapons already. on Apocalypse, he can use weapons here. You know? yeah, yeah, a sharpened stick. I wouldn't be surprised if that was, uh, we've, we've talked about things in the past where 
it seems as if the creators are not familiar with the source material or something. And <laughs> that seems like, mm, maybe you don't know Batman. Actually, this is what his whole deal is. These Japanese guys are like, Finally, we can do a take on Batman, and we'll make him a ninja. We'll do something. He's never before. <laughs> Trauma. I just wrote no. No. So so much. Okay, rating. I think it's a one. And again, not because I mean, they put a ton of work into this, genuine, honest effort, and I think they probably accomplished what they intended to do. It's just very, very much not for me. It's not to say you shouldn't watch it if it's up your alley. I'm also going to go 2.53 on this one. I can throw stuff out the window. That to you is equal to the League of Shadows that we just read. No, we've talked in the past about how we're not comparing these things. Don't get angry, Sam. (laughs) No, I'm I'm saying that that is uh, laughable to me. Um, I'm just fucking with you. It's, en- it's enjoyable to watch and if I really wanted whatever. It's fine to watch. I think it's visually appealing and I had fun if I just dismiss everything that I know about everything. <laughs> well, I watched Batman and Robin at like one and a quarter speed. And because I was watching this on Amazon Prime, I couldn't change the speed. If I could have watched this at a quicker tempo... I think I would have enjoyed it more. And I don't mean that as like a criticism. It's just that How? If this was fast. Yeah, I bet that would How? be hard to watch. It's so fast. So much shit happens. How could you possibly watch this any faster and understand what's happening? I just operate on a different training. level than you. Yeah. yeah, that's true. You've been training in virtual reality. <laughs> yeah. I can wow. take acclimated. stimulus in and you know discard the things I don't need. That's true. Yeah, I think I am with Ben on the one or possibly one and a half just because, again, on a technical level, the visuals are very well done. I just don't care for what they're doing with it. So I have it at one star for the uh, the cast doing the best they can. But yeah, I guess maybe one and a half just to uh, give them some credit for the, the visual work. Because even if I go see a big Hollywood movie that is stupid, you know, there's 300 people that worked on the VFX that look great. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I am an anime person. I'm not like hardcore anime person, but like I've watched a lot of anime. I like Japanese stuff. I like these gimmicks. But it really, I would have been so much happier if it didn't have any time travel. It was just these yeah. characters already in this setting. If it was a little more serious, a little more focused, and didn't have giant robots. I mean, that I don't, yeah. I don't really want that anywhere. I definitely don't want that in feudal Japan. Yeah. Because it just it no longer feels like we're even in that setting with everything that's going on. We're just in some weird fantasy land yeah. that looks sort of like feudal Japan. I think the funniest analogy, I watched a couple YouTube reviews of it after I finished it just to see if other people were as baffled as I expected them to be. And they are. But the funniest analogy <laughs> I saw was... Batman Ninja makes the Killing Joke cartoon look like the Killing Joke comic book. (laughs) (laughs) This is Robin. Thanks for checking out the Bat Fanatic podcast with Sammy Warmhands. All right, that is our show. If you haven't seen it, I swear to God, there is nothing that we have said that could possibly explain or do justice to the absolute insanity that is this movie so if you're at all interested do check it out it's on hbo max along with practically every other dc title we are going to come back to you with comics of course doing our every other friday routine switching between films and comics if you like the show please give us a five-star rating in your podcast app and share us to your stories help spread the word but we are going to return with a different vibe this time this is the darwin cook classic we're going to talk about batman ego stay tuned